In this lecture, I will discuss a highly relevant topic, the neurological side effects of antipsychotics. This video consists of two parts. Part 1 is about acute movement disorders, while Part 2 describes important concepts related to tardive side effects. Neurological side effects can be divided into two main groups, acute and tardive. Acute symptoms and syndromes include uh, akathisia, dystonia, and Parkinsonism. Tardive side effects include tardive dyskinesia and perioral movements. Let's start with the first of the acute neurological side effects, akathisia. The word means inability to sit still, describing an urge to move. It has a very strong component of subjective distress. One challenge clinicians face is the distinction between akathisia and agitation. This has important implications since an increase of antipsychotic dose in an attempt to treat agitation may worsen akathisia. Common clinical manifestations consist of shifting the weight from foot to foot, walking in the spot, inability to keep the legs still, and feelings of inner restlessness. This video shows some of the clinical findings I just mentioned. Akathisia has its onset frequently after five days of treatment, but sometimes it may appear in the second or third day of antipsychotic therapy. The pathophysiology and clinical features suggest structures outside the nigrostriatal pathway. An interesting fact is that akathisia not only can occur with first-generation agents, but also with newer drugs such as quetiapine and aripiprazole. The management of akathisia involves dose reduction or change of the causing antipsychotic. If this is not possible, the use of beta blockers such as propranolol has proven effective. High potency benzodiazepines such as clonazepam can also be used. Acute dystonia consists of intermittent and sustained contractions of muscles of tongue, face, neck and back. This abnormal movement typically occurs during the first five days of treatment. In 10% of cases, can appear in the first hours of antipsychotic therapy. The mechanism involves acute D2 antagonism, which lead to abrupt decreases in nigrostriatal neurotransmission. The population under higher risk are young patients, especially men treated with high-potency agents such as haloperidol or flufenacin. And you can use this picture as a reminder. This is one of the most frightening movement disorders. The sudden onset makes patients feel a sense of paralysis. Acute dystonia responds rapidly to anti-Parkinsonian medication. Regarding clinical features of dystonia, there are different types. Oculogyric crisis, retocolis and torticolis, macroglossia and tongue protrusion, and laryngeal and pharyngeal dystonias.